Hello friends, today I am going to explain you about the Smart Coat 3 multi-target thermal evaporator system made by Hind High Vacuum. In this video, I will explain you the block diagram or the schematic diagram of the system. So, let us begin with the block diagram. Here you can see the system diagram, not a block diagram, how the system is look like. If you see the system, you can see there is a bell jar in which there is a bell jar under which you can see the multi-target turate is there. There is also quartz crystal monitor inside, so quartz crystal is there and other facilities if you opt it for since it is a customized system like a plasma cleaner, so you will have a plasma electrode inside and rest other uh, of these things you can also have the electrode beam ablation inside but this we have not opted for in our system so apart from this you can see on just below the bell jar there are two handles one is the bigger and one is the smaller smaller is the uh, this is the needle wall to control the flow of the gases for the plasma purpose, plasma generation or plasma cleaning and the bigger handle is to rotate the turret or the target under the vacuum from outside. So without breaking the vacuum, we can change the target inside. On the right side, you can see there are two panels one is vertical which is a display panel and one is the nearly horizontal or slanted at the 40 or 30 degree which is uh, a control panel so on the control you will find the various control because since it is a high vacuum system it consists of a rotary pump a primary pumping system and a turbo pump a secondary pumping system and there uh, respective gauges so like Pirani gauges for the backing line of the turbo or the roughing of the chamber and other is a panning gauge which will read uh, very low pressure or high vacuum less than 1 minus 4 and there are two other panels which will read the current for the secondary in case of the LT mode and uh, primary in case of the HT mode so HT is used for the plasma generation and LT is used for high current for the metal deposition other than this uh, these there are few important things like venting the system so there will be a vent button there and LT HT control button will be there high vac valve or gate valve button will be there so all these are valves are solenoid operated so these are all are having the electrical controls this system is very good because there is a pressure interlock is provided for any mishappening or for any human inner error that can be prevented in this system there is uh, you can see uh, on the base there is door so in this door all the pumps like uh, rotary pump turbo pump two transformers for LT and HT and uh, uh, other things like uh, de different types of uh, uh, this uh, valve this uh, solenoid operated valves for backing roughing and uh, venting the system all are inside this chamber only 
and the panning gauge is directly connected to the chamber but uh, having uh, the body in, uh, in the cabinet so the in inlet of the gauge is opening uh, directly into the chamber for uh, high vacuum gauge like panning gauge but rest of the two gauges are just provided mm. to see the backing of the turbo and the roughing of the chamber they are far from the actual chamber so let us begin how the schematic or the block diagram of this system is looking like so I will explain the one by one <coughs> so this number one is the vacuum chamber or the bell jar where all the electrical connections are provided for the evaporation right now I am not going to explain you the uh, step of the evaporation right now I am just going to tell you about the all the block diagram how the vacuum is created in the system till minus 7 this system can go up to 1 e minus 7 within one and half hour so this is the good thing and if you are using liquid nitrogen trap of the turbo pump even you can go below even 1 e minus 7 on which deposition of titanium gold or nickel gold and aluminium titanium aluminium and aluminium gold whatever you want to do they will stick properly to the samples so this is the good thing about this system that you can achieve pressure below 1e-7 e as well so right now I am going to explain you the one by one so these are the block diagram or the schematic diagram of the HHV smart code 3 you can see there is a vacuum chamber and the 2 is the chamber pressure gauge or you can see this is a panning gauge which is directly connected to the chamber so this is basically the high vacuum gauge or a panning gauge make sure that you should never turn on the gauge panning gauge here just you turn on the system because you turn on when you turn on the system the pressure inside the chamber will be more than 1 e minus 3 or so so what you want to do here for these are the highway gauges so make sure that pressure already go below 1 e minus 4 when you turn on the panning gauge so make sure that you should never turn on the panning gauge as you turn on the system it should be turned on only when high vac valve is open with turbo in its maximum speed so now there is a third you can see there is a valve which is a high vacuum valve or we say the gate valve which is connecting the turbo to the chamber directly see here there is a high vac valve which is connecting the turbo which is indicated by the 5 and 4 is just a trap so this is nothing but a thermal connection between the line there is no uh, vacuum connection here but this is a just a line which is thermally contact with the line of uh, pressure line so this is a part of the vacuum it is not a part of the vacuum circuit but it is thermally connected to the vacuum line so turbo is connected to the chamber means 5 is connected to the chamber through 3 so 3 is a solenoid valve and this is called the high vac valve make sure you should never turn on the high vac valve before turbo reaches to its maximum speed so make sure before opening the valve 3 or the high vac valve turbo should reach to its maximum speed and when you should turn on the turbo for that also there is a provision 
in the backing line you can see the gauge is represented bit between 5 and 6 is a basically a number 8 which is hidden here so 8 is a backing pressure gauge so this should be the pressure in the backing line of the turbo should be less than uh, 2 5 e minus 2 millibar so as soon uh, once it reaches to the 5 e minus 2 millibar how you can go below 5e minus 2 millibar for that there is a uh, rotary pump is there this is represented by 16 so as soon as you turn on the system you should turn on the rotary pump and uh, you should operate the valve number 7 or you should choose the valve number 7 to open so that uh, rotary will be connected to the backing line of the turbo so as soon as you connect the rotary to the backing line of the turbo the gauge associated with the backing of the turbo which is 8 backing pressure gauge will go at lower pressure and rotary will pump easily up to less than 5e minus 2 millibar so as soon as you reach below this pressure 5e minus 2 millibar then you can turn on the turbo pump so now you have turned on the rotary you have connected rotary to the backing line of the turbo and when this pressure in the backing line reaches below 5e minus 2 you turn on the turbo pump now you have to wait for 15 to 20 minutes to reach the turbo to its maximum speed once it reaches to the maximum speed uh, the switch associated to the turbo pump will glow green or you can also find out by opening the chamber the chamber front door uh, front door actually front door not the chamber front door of the uh, cabinet of the system so if you find uh, if you open the front door of the cabinet of the system you will see there is a turbo panel is there a separate turbo panel is there on which you can see the indications of the speed so as soon as turbo reaches to its maximum speeds speed it will show all green so four of uh, the symbols will show green and that will be the indication that turbo reach to its uh, maximum speed or the simple way just to see from the control panel uh, the switch is going green so once the switch is going green then you can open number three here so as soon as you open three wait for 10 minutes and note down the pressure in the two panning gauge so this is very important step it will tell you the performance of the system or the leakage or something other mishappening may happen so if it is good uh, means if it is reaching below 1e minus 6 or so within 10 minutes then the health of the chamber of the system or the system is very good so you can leave the system to pump around 1 hour 1 hour to 1 and half hour it will reach around 1e minus 7 millibar and at the time you can add the liquid nitrogen to the ln2 trap and then you can start evaporation by taking some step uh, useful step so now i'm moving to the number four four is the liquid nitrogen trap i told you it is required to add some liquid nitrogen after the pumping the chamber one to one and half hour you need to add a liquid nitrogen to the liquid nitrogen trap though the four means liquid nitrogen trap is not a part of the vacuum circuit but it is providing a cooling to the vacuum line which is above the turbo and below the chamber it prevents basically fumes to go into the turbo blades metal fumes to the turbo blades because when you evaporate metals in the chamber there is a finite probability of going the fumes uh, or the 
metal atoms or clusters uh, towards the uh, turbo pump so to prevent those uh, clusters or fumes liquid nitrogen trap is provided so all the fumes will be collected or will be trapped into the four so this is called the liquid nitrogen trap later on we will come to five we have already discussed about this this is a turbo pump and how it should be operated it should be operated only when the gauge associated to the backing line should reach below 5e e minus 2 millibar then we should turn on the turbo and later on you can see there is a six this is a connection this is nothing more than that it's a flexible connection and like a bellow pipe or something then there is seven seven is a nine they are just controlled by a single switch so because uh, you can choose rotary to be connected in either direction either 9 or to the 7 7 is associated to the backing line of the turbo while the 9 is associated to the roughing of the chamber so while uh, when you connect uh, the turbo to the chamber one means if you are connecting the high speed turbo means you want to pump the chamber using the turbo so how you can do that so the basic thing is that you should not operate from the atmospheric pressure so you should not connect the chamber at atmospheric pressure to the turbo pump so always be careful before connecting or before opening to the three means high back valve or the gate valve to the chamber make sure the chamber pressure itself below 5e minus 2 millibar 5e minus 2 millibar so for doing that what we can do actually uh, we can connect for one or two minutes uh, the rotary pump 16 and 16 is a rotary pump 2 by opening the 9 so 9 is the roughing valve so if we open the roughing valve which is the 9 it will connect directly to the chamber so rotary will be connected directly to the chamber so rotary will pump out the chamber till 5e e minus 2 millibar or less maybe less than less than that so at this position what you can do you can again connect rotary to the backing line to 7 so close the 9 and open the 7 and uh, then you can connect 3 to the chamber so the high weight wall you can connect to the chamber so the basic thing is that what you are doing by doing so means you are evacuating the chamber and also you are evacuating the backing line of the turbo so turbo blades will not see a lot of pressure difference <coughs> that's what you are do doing here by making the pressure low enough in the chamber and low enough in the backing line so let's move further so 8 is the gauge associated to the packing line of the turbo which is a pirani gauge this you can keep turn on always unlike the gauge number two which is a panning gauge that can only be turned on when the turbo is connected to the chamber because the two is directly linked to the chamber also this is ionization gauge it may damage if you try to operate it uh, be, uh, above 1 e minus 4 millibar and 9 you can see this is the 9 is the roughing valve we have already discussed what is the use of 7 and 9 so these all which are make with the indication like electrical control or solenoid so these two are the solenoid valve operated by switch so say 9 is connecting rotary pump to directly to the chamber 
so this is very important to know about the 7 and 9 so we have already discussed the procedure now we can come to the 10 if you have done all the method or all the deposition and all then if you see the 10 is nothing but a directly connection to the environment to the chamber so this is a kind of vent fall if you try if you want to vent the system then you should turn on the 10 10 is the vent valve so make sure that gate valve or the high vac valve is closed before opening the vent valve so this you should be always taken care of and also make sure before venting the system you have turned on turned off the two means panning gauge should be turned off and the gate valve or the high vac valve is closed so there is two things you have to remember before opening the vent valve otherwise turbo or the panning gauge or both may damage the system so make sure you are very careful while operating the vent valve now sintered filter 11 is a sintered filter which is nothing but uh, it's a filter kind of uh, made from steel is provided so that the from the environment or from the outer gases whatever you are sending or dry air or something no dust or moisture can go inside the chamber so now 12 if you go to the 12 12 is a kind of needle valve here you can see this is a control of needle valve that I told you on the just below the just below the bell jar or the chamber there are two uh, controls are there to hand controls manual controls are there who oh, bigger one is for rotating the turette or the target and second one is the needle valve this needle valve is needed when you are trying to make the plasma inside the chamber for cleaning the samples and all so this actually control the gas flow inside the chamber when you want to make a plasma inside so you can connect the suitable gas for which you want to make a plasma and then you can control the pressure from this knob and keep the turbo in crack open uh, keep the gate valve in crack mode operation crack opening uh, crack open the gate valve and control the flow from 12 and uh, you can make a DC plasma inside by HT operation in our system we are not using this fa uh, facility but we have but we are not using it for some regions so 13 is a vacuum interlock this interlock is very essential suppose if you have kept on the gate valve or the high vac valve or panning gauge or you in that case you want to try to uh, try to open the vent valve system should not respond for your wrong command or the manual error so for this region there is a vacuum interlock is provided this interlock is the extra safety purpose for the beginners if they made a mistake but always it is not a good practice to use this kind of uh, facilities because you should be very careful while doing all the processing so make sure that you much you are not uh, relying on the interlock much so make it your procedure so accurate that so that you are not relying on the interlocks 
though it is provided but we should be extra careful while doing the things Now we can come to the 10. If you have done all the method, uh, all the deposition and all, then if you see the 10 is nothing but a directly connection to the environment, to the chamber. So the main thing is the 16. So 16 is a numbered last, but it is the most important part of the system because this is a turbo, uh, sorry, rotary pump. Uh, primary rotary pump which is used uh, initially and uh, when you turn on the system you should turn on the two gauges pirani gauges and this uh, rotary pump at uh, the very first moment so when you turn on the rotary you should turn on the two gauges then you operate the valve number seven or nine to make the pressure arrangements where you want to connect this rotary for pumping initially we connect rotary to the nine uh, uh, means roughing to the chamber so when we get sufficient less pressure inside the chamber then we connect rotary to the backing line of the turbo and when it reaches less than 5e minus 2 millibar we turn on the turbo pump and wait for 15 to 20 minutes to reach its maximum speed then again we connect this rotary to the roughing to make the pressure in roughing less than 5e minus 2 millibar then again connect to the backing line of the turbo then we open the three means gate valve or hive valve so now the turbo is pumping to the chamber and then after two minutes we can turn on the panning gauge to read the pressure and after 10 minutes we note down the pressure to check the health of the pumping system or vacuum system so if it is around 1e e minus 6 millibar in 10 minutes then the health of the system is very good so we can leave the system to pump around one or two uh, one to uh, one and a half hours and it should reach less than 5e minus 7 millibar and uh, once it is reached uh, 5e minus 7 millibar then we add liquid nitrogen to the ln2 trap which is number four here we add a liquid nitrogen here and wait for 10 minutes and then we can turn on the chiller for the quad crystal monitor and we can start the position 17 here the exhaust outlet which is nothing but uh, the extract gases from the chamber so that we need to throw out from the system so this is the exhaust so this is the gauge panning gauge here 
just you turn on the system because you turn on when you turn on the system the pressure inside the chamber will be more than 1 e minus 3 or so so what you want to do here for these are the highway gauges so make sure that pressure already go below 1 e minus 4 when you turn on the panning gauge so make sure that you should never turn on the panning gauge as you turn on the system it should be turned on only when high vac valve is open with turbo in its maximum speed so now